So we've learned how to add and subtract complex numbers. How does one multiply complex numbers? Well, it turns out that since complex numbers themselves are two-dimensional numbers, it's a real part plus an imaginary part, multiplying them is going to feel a lot like the FOIL method because you have a binomial times a binomial, essentially. Um, the only thing that we have to keep track of is what happens when you multiply together powers of i. Like, because the number i itself is the square root of negative 1, um, when you take i to the first power, there's no big deal there, but when you get i squared, well, i squared is going to be i times i. That's what it means to square something. And so you're taking the square root of negative 1 squared. If this truly is the square root of negative 1, then the square should be negative 1 by definition. And so i squared is equal to negative 1. If you know nothing else about i, that's basically the only thing you need to know is that i squared is equal to negative 1. Uh, that definition right there takes care of everything else. Now, what if you had to take higher powers? What if you had to take like i cubed, for example? Well, i cubed means you're going to take i squared times i, which is actually equal to negative 1. And if you take i to the fourth, that would look like i squared times i squared, which is going to be negative 1 squared, which, it's, which is just 1 right there. Um, and so if I clean this thing up, this list up real quickly, let me kind of summarize what we just said. Um, if you take i to the first, that's just going to be an i. i squared is negative 1 i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is 1. The reason why I wanted to clean that thing up is, look if we continue on with this list. If we take i to the fifth, i to the fifth is i to the fourth times i, which since i to the fourth is 1, this is just going to give you an i. If you take i to the sixth, this would be i to the fourth times i squared. i to the first, i to the fourth is just a 1, and then i squared is negative 1. If you take i to the seventh, you're going to end up with i to the fourth, times i cubed, which i to the fourth is still 1, and i cubed is negative i. And then i to the eighth is equal to, well, that's just equal to i to the fourth times i to the fourth, which would be 1 times 1, which is 1. And looky here, if you look at these numbers, i negative 1, negative i 1, i negative 1, negative i 1, those are just the same numbers that just repeated themselves. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, well, that's actually not a coincidence. Let me kind of show you what happens if we look at the next couple of these. Uh, let's do it again here. Uh, leaving off, uh, picking up where we left off, I should say. i to the ninth. This would look like i to the eighth times i, which we already saw i to the eighth was one. So this is an i. Uh, let me write that again. That's an i. If you do i to the tenth, that would just be i to the eighth times i squared. You end up with one times i i squared, which is negative 1. You get i to the 11th, which would equal i to the 8th times i cubed. i to the 8th is 1, like we observed, and then so we get a negative i again. And then i to the 12th would equal i to the 8th times i to the 4th, which we already saw that i to the 8th and i to the 4th are 1, so you get a 1. And so looky here, it's the exact same number sequence again. i, negative 1, negative i, 1. i, negative 1, negative i, 1. And this is what happens. As you take powers and powers and powers of i, they always cycle through the same four numbers, always in this order. i, negative 1, negative i, 1. i, negative 1, negative i, 1. Like arbitrarily large powers of i, it really just comes down to can we find the biggest multiple, whoops, the biggest multiple of 4 inside the power, take it away, and then see what's left over. So, for example, if you wanted to do i to the 27, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what's the biggest multiple of 4 that goes into 27. Um, we could write this as i to the 24 plus 3. The idea here is that 24 is going to be 4 times 6. And then you have this i cubed right here. Why do we care about multiples of 4? But like, like we were seeing earlier, every time you take a multiple of 4, Every time you take a multiple of 4, you're just going to get i to the 4th, which is just a 1. And if you have like 1 to the 6, that's just going to be 1 still, right? And so we can ignore multiples of 4 when it comes to exponents of i, because every 4 powers, you just get a 1 again, and multiplication by 1 doesn't do anything. So the only thing we have to know is, once you ignore the multiple of 4, what is i cubed? And that's going to be a negative i which gives us the solution right here. So i to the 27th power is negative 1. What about i to the 101st power, right? That's, made, that's a lot of Dalmatians, but it's not a hard thing when it covers of i right here. Because what we can do is recognize the following. 100 is, sorry, 101 is just 101. And, and 
one, right? Uh, 100 is a multiple of four, right? It's, it's four times 25. And as such, we can, we can ignore all multiples of four in the exponent of i. That just leaves i to the first, in which case then this product is just going to equal an i. If we know that, we can then handle any power of i, and hence any multiplication that involves i. We truly need to worry about, I mean, we're going to, in practice, we'll mostly just see i squared equals negative one. This all derives from that observation. So let's look at some multiplication then of arbitrary complex numbers. Like I said, it's basically the FOIL method, right? Um, you're going to take first, first, outside, inside, last. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 5 times 2. So we take the product of the first two terms, 5 times 2. We're going to add that to uh, the outside terms, 5 times 7i. Then we're going to take the product of the inside terms. So we get 3i times 2. And then we get the product of the last terms right here. So we're going to get 3i times 7i. So performing these products, we see that 5 times 2 is 10. Uh, 5, plus 7, uh, 5 times 7i is 35i. 3i times 2 is a 6i. And then 3i times 7i will be 21i squared. For which then we try to... We're going to try to combine like terms here. You'll notice that the 35i and the 6i, we can add to 41i. You have a 10, but also notice that we have an i squared. Like we said above, i squared is the same thing as a negative 1. And so having an i squared in there actually means we have a negative 21, which those are both real numbers which we can add together, or I should say subtract here. And so we get the resultant negative 11 plus 41, 41i, which would then be the product of these two imaginary numbers. So when you FOIL out the complex numbers, you just have to remember to uh, replace i squared with negative i. What if we wanted to do like 2 plus i cubed? Well, 2 plus i cubed means 2 plus i times 2 plus i times 2 plus i. And so to compute this one, we're just going to FOIL out the 2 plus i. Um, if we do the first two, you'll end up with 2 times 2, which is 4. You're going to get a 2i. You're going to get a 2i. And then you're going to get a negative 1, the i squared. I took the liberty of replacing that one there. Combining like terms, you end up with 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then 2i plus 2i, which is a 4i. And then we're going to times that by 2i again. Foil this thing out. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times i is a 3i. 4i times 2 is 8i. And then 4i times i is a negative 4. Again, I took the liberty of writing i squared as a negative. Combining like terms, 6 take away 4 is a 2. And then 3i plus 8i should give us an 11i. And that would be then 2 plus i cubed. Cubing just means we just have to foil it multiple times. So we had to do the first two. And then we did the third one. 